There are some aspects to doing our jobs as solution-focused clinicians that require work that is outside of the therapy room and inside of ourselves. One of those aspects is the very crucial need to build and hold on to a belief in the goodness of people. This belief encapsulates a lot all at once and allows you to ask questions that move clients towards their desired outcome, even if they are in an unimaginably difficult place or have made life altering mistakes in the past. Let me describe what a belief in the goodness of people looks like and how it is necessary for effective therapy. Believing in the inherent goodness of people does not mean you have to naively expect that people will always do good things or make ideal choices in every context. It actually looks more like believing that people will generally do the best they can with what they have. Every person you meet in life is the product of a series of their reactions to their contexts. Sometimes those reactions brought harm to themselves or to others. Sometimes those reactions were really conducive to their wellness and ambitions. Your belief in their goodness does not take away their agency or responsibility for their decision-making within the context that they find themselves in. This belief is much more related to the desire inside of them for good for themselves. This belief is anchored in the understanding that people want to live well. People desire contentment and ease. The things that get in the way of that desire or the destructive, unhealthy paths that sometimes people might take to attempt to achieve contentment and ease are less relevant. To do our jobs well, we just need to believe that that desire is within them. Disbelieve the things that try to convince you otherwise, even in the most extreme of circumstances. People struggling with suicidal ideations still desire goodness and contentment for themselves. They just might presently be persuaded that the obstacles obstructing their way to get those things are immovable. Those suffering underneath the weight of addiction also want good for themselves. They have just fallen into a trap of chasing substance-induced momentary ease that comes with a large risky price. The truth of addiction, however, is that it's not bad people who become addicted to substances. It's not people with weak willpower. The people who get trapped in addictions are simply the people closest to the temptation of addiction. People living in drug infested neighborhoods, people needing relief from chronic pain and other conditions, people suffering after unfortunate life events, people stuck in hope crushing poverty. Though we can believe in the desire for contentment inside of people, it can still be true that some people are bad strategists at achieving contentment. Some maybe even feel it is just way too difficult to go get and achieve good things for themselves. Even still, the desire is always there. If you can find and anchor within yourself a deep belief in the goodness of people, it changes the way you speak to them. It changes what you assume about them and what you expect from them. It most certainly changes how you ask them questions. How does it do all this? It allows you to take their responses, their hopes, and their objects of meaning absolutely seriously. It allows you to hear all the important pieces of their lives and how they fit together. And it inherently grants you the ability to know that this person has a lot to teach you about their lives. In our therapy work, we persistently ask the client about their relationship with their desired outcome whether in the past, present, or future, out of an unchanging belief that they both already have a relationship with it and are capable of more. When you have a solid belief in the goodness of people, you are beyond the point of ever being stuck in sessions because you can no longer be convinced that maybe the client doesn't have much of a relationship with the good things they want. There's no longer even the smallest space for that notion in your mind. So in addition to your practice, in addition to your reading and your studying, and in your trying to become a better therapist, try to also live as someone who believes in people. Even outside of sessions and consultations, practice seeing much more in people. Assume there is a desire for contentment and ease 
buried somewhere within them. Even when it is really hard to find, believe that it is just a trait of human nature, that we all have it somewhere in us. Eventually, your doubt, your concerns, your worries, even your resentment will all disappear because you will have an unshakable ability to see the goodness in a person and that will make all the difference.